Hi friends, so I don't have a lot of time because I've obviously washed my makeup off and I'm getting ready for bed. But since it's Christmas, I wanted to give us a gift and just respond to this little comment, this little cute thing right here. Obviously someone, instead of just eating like their raggedy noodles or spaghetti or whatever they were supposed to have for dinner and going to sleep, they thought that they would drag themselves into my comment. And I honestly, it's cute. But first and foremost, I am not a former anything. I am currently the host of the highest rated show in television. And I know, I know, I know that makes you mad. And that's fine because you've never seen a woman in that seat because oh, I'm the first. And so it must be hard for you to like deal with the fact that it looks a little different right now, but you're gonna get through it, sweetie. I want everyone watching to check this out from Maria Taylor. Second of all, I always think it's so interesting when people are like, oh my God, you just got the job because you're black and it's like a diversity situation when it was just like moments ago that my grandmother couldn't even attend the university that I graduated from. So the fact that I now have this like random privilege because of the color of my skin is just, unbeknownst to me. Like, I didn't know that that was a thing. I didn't know that there was like this black privilege thing going around, but I'll be sure to tell all my girlfriends so that we all kind of hop in on that trend. The school is the University of Georgia. We'll talk about that in a moment. But the reality is that I have worked for 10 hard years and I have been the only one in the room. I have worked to build relationship with players, coaches, and also being responsible, reliable, and trustworthy at my job. My track record is pretty flawless and I understand that I can't have any slip ups like that's not allowed because I'm a black woman. OK, so I know also that me occupying the seat that I occupy on Sundays means that there's a young girl who's sitting at home and she sees me and she's going to say, guess what? I can do that because you know what? I didn't have that. I didn't think that I could do this, but I made a way anyway. This is something she has spoken on previously and shows the power of persistence and commitment. She played volleyball and basketball at UGA, making all SEC for the former. After graduation, she traveled for assignments where black athletes routinely sought her counsel about racial injustice and job opportunities after college. Some didn't know what to do after being called the N-word on campus. Others asked why there weren't more black head coaches in college football. Thus, Taylor did the following. Hey everyone, it's Maria Taylor here, and guess what? It's that time of the year again. We are now accepting applications for our 2020 Winning Edge Leadership Academy retreat. What's that? Well, if you haven't heard, I have a nonprofit called the Winning Edge Leadership Academy, and we are in our fifth year of operation. This will be our third retreat. Now, our mission is to help minorities and women break into the sports industry. We want to build a very diverse sports industry. We're helping the young student athletes that say they want to be a GM one day or want to be an athletic director. And we're connecting them with that internship or that first level job that's going to allow them to have a very long and successful career. Now, the Winning Edge Retreat, it's about four days of pure professional development. You're going to meet people from within the industry that have been working in it for years and they have the opportunities, they have the ability to hire, they have the ability to connect you young people with the individuals that are going to help you land your first job and have a long and successful career in sports. On the UGA front, it took until 1961 for the school to desegregate. Two courageous students, Hamilton Holmes and Charlene Hunter, took heroic steps on the University of Georgia's campus to enroll as students. The comment Taylor responded to read, you must be proud to use your race to get your job. The reality of it all is that sports media is not diverse in the slightest. 79.2% of sports editors were white. Over 83% were men. 72% of the assistant sports editors were white. 75.8 men. 77.1% of the columnists were white. Over 82% were men. 77% of reporters were white. Over 85% were men. 77% of the copy editors slash designers were white. 75% were men. 72.4% of web specialists were white. Over 78% were men. There were some increases, but it was at a tortoise's pace. The percentage of women sports editors increased significantly from 10% in 2018 to 16.7% in 2021. 
the percentage of women columnists rose slightly from 16.6% in 2018 to 17.8% in 2021. The percentage of women reporters rose from 11.5% in 2018 to 14.4% in 2021. The percentage of women copy editors slash designers increased significantly from 20.4% in 2018 to 24.7% in 2021 for the upper management category, a new category that analyzes the managing director positions across an entire newspaper or website. Women's representation was a report card high 36.3%, meaning all but one gender category, assistant sports editors, improved since the 2018 report card, and still the grades are dismal. We need more women in this industry, says Lisa Wilson, former APSE president and a key advisor to the study we have cited in this piece. We need those voices. We need that perspective. We need them making coverage and hiring decisions. What these numbers show is the comment that Maria Taylor received is completely unfounded. Completely. All people are running the same race and they're just trying to get to that finish line, whatever that success, that big goal is. And the real reality is, is that people of color and or specifically women of color have way more hurdles in their race than anybody else. And we don't sit around asking for pity and we don't sit around asking for anyone to help us. But we definitely do not deserve for people to tell us that the only reason we got our job is because of our race. And this also sheds light on the comments we heard from Taylor's former co-worker, Rachel Nichols, who essentially said Taylor got her job because of her race. The first thing they teach you in journalism school is don't be the story. But Rachel Nichols became the story after a secretly recorded tape was played in which she implied that her colleague, Maria Taylor, got a plump ESPN hosting gig because she's black. I was Maria Taylor, all the success in the world. She covers football, she covers basketball. If you need to give her more things to do because you're feeling pressure about your like crappy long time record on diversity, which by the way, I myself like know personally from the female side of it, like go for it. Just, you know, find it somewhere else. Like you're not gonna find it with me and take my thing away. Because the reality is we got our job in spite of our race, in spite of the fact that no one imagined us here, in spite of the fact that a lot of people might not even want to see us here. And in spite of the fact that at every single turn, we may have doubted ourselves because we didn't know that we deserved to be there because the world told us that we didn't. So ladies, I just wanted you to know real quick that you deserve to be in every room that you occupy and hold every seat that you occupy. And this man right here is going to have to sit back and watch because you're great.